Hi everybody. Thought we would talk today about practicing your scales. Ugh. Nobody likes practicing scales. It's kind of like stretching after you work out. No one likes to do it. It takes time that no one wants to take. Uh, but honestly, they're probably the most important building block that we have of finger technique and honestly of sight reading too. If you can really learn and understand your key signatures of your major and minor scales too, oh my God, does it help with sight reading. Um, when I start kids playing the flute, very beginning, um, we learn the scales that fit into whatever notes they have already learned fingerings for. Um, as they get more comfortable on their instruments, um, I start taking them up, really at whatever pace I feel like they can handle. Um, I have, let's see, I have a fifth grader right now that I'm teaching who can play uh, C major up to high C and the rest of the scales she is playing two octaves. Uh, that's not true. She's playing B also in three octaves and then the rest are two. Um, I have I have other fifth graders who can't do that. Um, so them we're just sticking with two octaves. Um, my more advanced kids the ones that want to play the level six solos, the ones that want to go to school for music, I tell them to play all of their scales up to the highest notes that they can. I would say the minimum would be high C or B, depending on key signature. Um, if they're really serious, you should make them go up to D uh, or D flat, C sharp as key signature allows. Um, I go up higher than that, honestly, because when I was in college, I felt like high D was hard and it wasn't getting easier. So I started to think that perhaps if I started playing up to high E, that uh, D wouldn't seem so bad. And that actually did help. Um, it's really super unpleasant to listen to. Uh, it's like super loud and I have to wear plugs to do it. So you should do that at your own risk. But um, if you're serious about flute and you want to really work on your fingers and their coordination, really scales all up to high notes are really the way to go. You will be amazed. Now, when I practice my scales, I alternate every other day. I'll do a slower tempo, like a hundred or slower. And then the alternating days, I do a fast tempo or faster and the reason I started doing that is because I don't even know how long ago I realized that I could only play high notes fast and if I had to do them a little bit slower I literally could not do it and when I tried to practice my scales with the real high notes slowly I was mortified at what I heard and what I did not hear <laughs> which is smooth fingers so in a lot of ways, I feel like practicing scale slow is even harder than it is to go fast. So ever since then, I've alternated the tempos. And I don't pick the same slow tempo every day. Like I pick, you know, one, one day I might do 100, the next day I might do 80, the next slow day I might do 70, whatever. And then on my fast days, you know, one day I might do 108, I might do 120, I might do 132. Honestly, I hit the metronome and wherever it stops is is what I do. Um, I practice my scales all slurred. Um, when I'm working on fingers, I want to work on fingers. I, I feel like it does not work for me to multitask and work on fingers and play my scales in different articulations. And, you know, to me, that's too many things to concentrate on. And I don't feel like I'm effective. Um, the only time that I will use articulation with practicing scales is if I'm playing, you know, three octaves and I can hear that there's an issue, um, 
Sometimes I can't tell where the issue is. Like if you're going fast enough, you can hear that something's off, but sometimes you can't tell exactly where it is. And if that happens to me, then I'll slur beats. So if I'm playing 16th notes, I'll slur four at a time. Um, I feel like that's been really helpful for me to be able to pick out, oh, that's where the problem is when I'm only listening to four at a time as opposed to like one long string of three octaves. Um, when I when I first got in BPO, I really did not have a handle on my minor scales, um, which in retrospect is kind of appalling, um, but I didn't. And once I started to really, I forced myself to learn these minor scales, my sight reading and minor keys got so much better. Um, so what I started doing is practicing one major scale and I, I liked the parallels better. So I would do one major scale and the three parallel minors to go with it all the way up and all the way down. At the beginning, I, I really couldn't put it to a metronome because um, it just wasn't even enough. So at the start, I went slow all the way up, all the way down and really concentrated on keeping my fingers as relaxed and lightest touch possible. Um, now, when I say the three minor scales, I mean natural minor, which is no alterations, melodic minor, which is sharp uh, six and seven on the way up, natural minor on the way down, and then harmonic minor, which is sharp seven, seventh note of the scale, raised a half step, ascending and descending. Um, that's how I did it for a long time. And once I got that under control, um, and just like I said, I only did four scales a day. And I would do them for maybe a week. And then the next week, I would move on to another key. Um, I did it that way for quite a while. Now, I have a book that I really like to use, Scales for Jazz Improvisation. When I was in my early 20s, I took a year of jazz lessons, which I loved. Um, and this book, this book is pretty great. It goes through... Um, all the different modes. Um, well, the last one I was practicing here was uh, Lydian Flat 7. And what I like about this book is it's basically just all the same notes just going in different orders, different sequences. Um, I'm at the point now where I can play all 15 of these in a day without getting completely overwhelmed. I do them all up to high E or E flat as key signature dictates, um, alternating my fast and slow tempos. And then I'll spend a month on a page in this book, and then I go on to the next one, and I spend another month on that one. And honestly, I've probably been through this book. It takes me more than a year to get through this book, um, spending a month on a page, and I've probably been through it I don't know probably at least five times and every time I get back to the beginning and I'm back to the major Ionian scales I notice it's better than the last time so that is those are my best suggestions for scales um, if you watch the other video that I did on alternate fingerings um, I talk in there about speed fingerings versus tone fingerings and when I'm practicing my scales, I always use my speed fingerings, even if I happen to be practicing the scale slowly, because I want to get to the point where I can take the scale fast and not have to use a different set of fingerings that I haven't practiced slowly first. So I hope that's helpful. Uh, you can check out that other video that I did with the different high note fingerings that I've adapted to go fast. And hope that helps for all you flute players. Bye.